Hello. In my last video, we worked with uh, ADF and how to access uh, security data from the well, WebLogic LDAP. In that video, we went into the security realm and we went into my realm and we worked with the users there. I added my own name and uh, under that, some attributes. Um, and groups, and then we changed some of the values and got some of the values from uh, the ADF application that I showed you. So in today's uh, video, we're going to continue with that. Uh, however, we are going to add users that are from the uh, employees table, and we're setting some of the attributes. I'm only setting three of them, but we have the employee number, and we have, I believe would be the Mail, yes. So uh, then I also have uh, Nina Kochar, and she is in here also. And you can see that her user group is 101, and this is her email. It also happens to be her login. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, once we access WebLogic, uh, this is the video, by the way, that you should see in order to understand what we're doing today. What we're going to be doing is, is once this person logs on, we're going to get the username, and then we're going to get the number here, uh, and then query the data that they would see on the form using that. So here is my form. I'm just going to show you um, all of the fields that are in the employees table. And I'm putting the uh, fields out there so we can see a little bit how it works. I've got uh, two fields out here that we're going to be searching by, and one is the employee number, and that's set to 100, which corresponds to Stephen King, and this one is Nina Kochar, which uh, corresponds to her information. So what we would do here is, is let's get this started. We'll run this application, and we'll run uh, logging in as one. And then I'll show you how uh, later on we can hook this up so that uh, when the person logs on, he will automatically query on their data and only their data, which is quite helpful when you are running an application and you need data-specific information or user-specific information. OK, I'm going to be logging on as Nina Kochar. And let's just get this over here so we can look at it. Takes a little while sometimes with ADF. And of course, this is on a my own server. Sorry, here we go. OK, so now you can see that I've got this one. You can see here that uh, I can scroll through and look at many users. So this is just a typical employee table that's on the HR schema. But here I have the GetInp ID, and uh, it's kind of improperly uh, named. But uh, So I'm going to search for it, and it's going to go to this Imp ID. And you can see now that these buttons are not uh, enabled, which means that it's the only record available. I can also uh, go over here to Nina Kochar, and um, I can come over here, and I can refresh the data, and then go and see all of the data uh, again. So how is this done? Let's take a look at this picture. Let's go into this one. We'll, we'll come over here. And um, OK, so which one is this? This is we're creating. Sorry, just a second. It didn't seem to go to that button. Jump over to get imp ID. And in fact, let's take a look at that quickly. So it's the page flow scope get Get by, get by imp ID action. All right. So just to make sure that I, where is that? Okay, here it is. I don't know why. Usually it goes right to it. So, and at any rate, what I'm doing here is I'm getting the value of that field. Then I'm plugging it into this and I'm handing it that string. Now, even though in the table it's a number, uh, I'm just taking it as a string. So here we're doing is a system out. We're getting the employee by ID. 
And now what we're doing is we are using the ADF Utils uh, Helper class, which I went over a little bit on a yet pre more previous video, and showing how we can get the application model SSF data control, which is named here. In the lower left, you can see that it's exactly spelled the same way. Uppercase, lowercase is very important with that. And that is referring to the, oh goodness, let's see where it is. Here it is, application module FFF, SSF. Okay, and you can see here that we have the employees V01. All right, let's go back. So, all right, wait. All right, so here we are again. So ADF utils, get application for um, <clears throat> module for data control. And let's just go to that quickly. And you can see that all it's doing is going to the JSF utils, which is yet another model. Now, these ones are available in um, some of the downloads. I'm sure if you just do a search on it, you'll find it. So I'm not going to go over where to get it, but you can find it on the internet here and there and in several Oracle examples. Okay, so once we get that, we're going to say am.getEmployeesVO. This is a declaration in the application module SSF impl. You can see that. So we're getting the VO, okay, and we re it returns a VO impl, all right, which is right here. So you need to have this created. You need to have this created and this created, the view object class and the view object row class. More likely this one for this particular one. Okay, but once we start looking at the individual data, we'll want to access this class too. So you need to have these two. You also need to have the app module impl. So here you would want to create this. So create <coughs> on the VO, you create the two uh, object class and the row class and on the app module you also create the SSF impl or the app module impl okay and then you can access that using the ADF utils right now I'm getting a little lost here and then what I do is I access the impvo get view criteria and this impview I, I imp view I criteria allows me to search on the employee ID and we can come over here and see that down here <clears throat> I've created the employees by imp ID and you can see that I am just saying hey the imp ID equals this bind variable p imp ID which is right here okay and that is written to here <clears throat> so just a second let's go back I get the uh, the view criteria, and then I clear clear it. So this removes that particular view criteria in case it's already set. I'm not sure if that's absolutely necessary. And then I set the bind variable, which is this, in the view object, and I set it to the LDAP number, which is what was handed to me by the uh, program. And then I set the employee view criteria, and then I execute the query. So I know this is a lot. We're going back and forth between all these things. By now, hopefully you have an understanding of what each one of these does and how to do it. And this is just saying, from a JSF page, I can access the application module I can access the view object impl, which is basically the view object. From that, I can get the view criteria. I can re remove it or clear it if it's set. I can also then set a, new, a named where clause param. Actually, I do think this is necessary. Maybe not. Depends. Uh, you'd have to test it to, to see if it's necessary. I can uh, set the bind variable, and I can set the view criteria. Uh, to this name. And all of these have been put in either the view criteria or the application module so that you can set these. Okay? And by running this, uh, you can then query the page on that particular uh, user 
employee number. Now in this one, it's very similar, except instead of the employee ID view criteria, I'm getting the email view criteria. So <clears throat> practice writing this and uh, see how you do. OK, so next, let's take a look back. I'm just going to close all these because we've just got too many things open. And we'll go back to here. And you can see, oh, we, we should go over this one. This one's useful. Uh, this is the clear VCs. And basically, I'm saying, hey, get the, uh, from, from the employee view object, OK, uh, get this one. <coughs> Actually, I, I'm starting down here. Refresh data action. I grab a um, application module from that. I get the employee view ID and I hand it into this method, which then takes the employee view ID. It gets all of the view criteria that are available and it just says, hey, for each one of these view criteria, remove it, clear it. And then I re-execute the query. And actually, probably at the end, this should probably be here. Because I don't need to run it for each view criteria that I clear. So I think that's probably a better place to locate it. Just clear them all, and then execute the query. OK? So let's go back to here. Now, what this is here is a output text that is accessing the welcome username variable in the user data bean. So if we go back to the user data bean at the very top, I have this. In this getter and setter, somewhere here, <coughs> let's just uh, try to find it this way. Okay, actually it's right here. You can see that I set it here. Okay, here. Um, this is where I'm getting it, and I would say, hey, we're starting up now. If this is null or the length is zero, I want you to go out to the LDAP, and <clears throat> I want you to get the display name and then set it so that when the person logs on, it will say, welcome Nina, Nina Kuchar. What we're also going to do is, since her employee ID is 101, we're going to then query it so that only her data shows up. So um, I think we can put it right here. And uh, surprise, surprise, I have the code already written right here. And I don't need this. This is just to run. Uh, we went over this in a video previous where it just shows all of the LDAP properties, the attributes for each person. So if you don't remember what it is, that's good to use. Um, this one is going to get the employee number. And then um, we're going to use the same method that the button used to set it. And we're just going to say, hey, get the employee ID, by ID number. So if we go back to this, you can see that it's getting this uh, piece of code here, and it's going to set the view criteria to the employee ID that we log on with. So let's do this. I'm going to close this out and come over here and see if we need to log in again. Sometimes, yeah, see, it, it's somehow stuck in the cache. So I'm going to just kill this session. and run it again. Now, when it starts, it's going to say starting up. Actually, it's going to go to a login screen first, so it won't hit this immediately. But the login screen is then going to shunt us over to this page. The view one. Here we go. Nina Kochar, I don't need to put that in. And submit <clears throat> down here. We should start to see it moving in. 
It says starting up, it gets the LDAP user information, employee number, and that. Now you can see that, you know, even though these are set, these are just read only, uh, <clears throat> you can see that it's gone to Nina Kochar. Okay, and I can't go to any other data. It shows only her information because that's what we set it to when we wanted to start. Let's do that again for SK. We'll kill the application. Run. Okay, this time we're going to do S King, and let's just type it. Now this will go to down here. If we look at the bottom here in the uh, area here, we'll see that it's getting starting up. It's getting security info one, employee number one, and going out, and it goes to Stephen King. So this is really great because we're finally able to hook up our user to the WebLogic LDAP or whatever LDAP you're using and then go to data that is specific to that user and only that user. So this is really something that will help you um, get your act together as far as a developer goes and be able to implement applications that are user specific. Again, all of these buttons still work up here. Well, actually, we need to go to Koshar. We can clean it. But uh, these were just for example only. The real thing is, is that once we log on, and the interesting thing is, is that by setting this little welcome sign here, I can actually have, uh, sorry, I can actually have other code run that will query the form as I log in. Now, there are other ways of doing it, obviously, but this is one of them. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Have a good night.